Um, and I also want to um, emphasize the fact that this state of things nowadays has been caused by the capitalist, colonial, imperialist, patriarchal state. And this state is polymorphic. It takes many forms. It's so strong that it even is embedded into ourselves. We, in a way, represent and voice this state. And we can, uh, and I think our duty, our responsibility, is to dismantle this state of things. And we have to engage in a civilatory uh, discussion about how we are going to construct the, the societies for those that are to come. Because as you might know as well, in indigenous languages, we don't have nouns, but we have actions. We don't really say in my language, future generations. We say those that are to come. Because they already exist at this present moment. You know, those that are to come, they exist in the material world. But I was referring to the polymorphic nature of the state. Because as Bob again uh, uh, emphasized, you know, they are twisting the whole agenda of climate change or climate justice. And they are trying to make a fact out of it. And we shouldn't permit that. Um, you know, the, since the inception of the colonial states, we've been going through several crises in different uh, forms and in different degrees. And nowadays, we are living in a global crisis of all sorts. Well, uh, Ben has mentioned like the food crisis, the energy crisis, the climate crisis, the political crisis, social crisis, you know, crisis of all sorts. But for me, the most important crisis that we're living in and that we really have to deal with and we have to solve it is the value, the, the crisis in the value systems we have, the crisis in the perceptions we have, because we have adopted the perceptions and the ways of organizing and the ways of understanding the world through the prism of modern Western sciences. And we are always trying to validate our knowledge through that prism. So we have to stop that. We have to build a new set of references that are our own indigenous references. Because we have them. Nowadays there are 7,000 uh, languages on the planet. They are becoming extinct as I speak, but I think it is our duty to recuperate our cultures, because it is our cultures that are going to permit us to come out of this crisis. We've proved that in Bolivia, and now we have a indigenous president. We are going through big pro a big process of changes, but we are still with the colonial state. And we still have to transcend this colonial state. It's very hard to build a liberated, non-colonial state using the colonial state. And that's what, what we're trying to do in Bolivia. It's a very tough task. I wouldn't like to be Evo Morales today. <laughs> you know, he's a very courageous man, and he's, ta he's, he's taken on that task of dismantling this, the colonial state. But. Um, Uh, in, the, in, the, in the world nowadays, the states, they have considered, you know, one of the basic assumptions of the existence of the colonial patriarchal state is that Mother Earth is infinite in her capacity to provide natural resources. She's also deemed to be infinite in her capacity to absorb the waste that we produce, especially those that live, that live in industrialized countries. And she, and, and she has her limits, and we're very close to her limits. Like nowadays, we make a calculation with, a, uh, with some students of mine. We would need 1.4 1, planets to sustain the rate of consumptions that we have worldwide. And we don't have 
not to be 1.001 planet. We just have one planet. And we should really, we, we really have to, re we, have, we have the responsibility of being able to look at our future generations in the eye without feeling any shame. And here I want to contrast something that I have been talking about with some elders in Bolivia, in Ecuador, some Yadidis, they are like shaman, but the translation is not that, that uh, linear, is the fact that, you know, when we talk about rights, we're still dwelling in the Western world. Because actually, I have an elder of mine here, my wife's brother, Greg Brewster, that he wrote a book, it's called The Theory of Rights. And he, when he was writing this book, we did a side research about the notion of rights in other languages. And we didn't find a correlation in other languages. There's not an, an indigenous language that expresses the notion of rights as understood in the Western world. We found, first of all, responsibilities, integra uh, integrities and dignities. No rights in, in our indigenous languages. <clears throat> so I prefer to talk about responsibilities. I think we have to shift, and this is, has to do with the shift of perception that we have to go through from the notion of rights, and we have to move forward to the notion of responsibility. And responsibility is the ability to respond. And that's why you're here, because you are able to respond. You were able to wake up early this morning, today is Saturday, you know, everybody needs to sleep in, but you were able to respond and to come here. You know, we were expecting more people, but you know, doesn't really matter, like indigenous peoples in Canada, they are not more than 3%. Globally, they are not more than 5%. In my country, we are 84%. <laughs> 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 you know? But that's not important. The, the importance of indigenous peoples is not the numbers. It's what we represent. We represent the geography. We are not the <coughs> We, you cannot separate indigenous peoples from their territories. We are the territory. In that sense, we have choreographic knowledge. Chore chore choreography is geography, but at a local basis. So, Algonquin people, they know their, ter their territory so well that they can predict what's going to happen just by looking at small changes that are happening on the land. I remember once when I talked with Father William Comanda, he told me that in the year 1945, 46, he had already seen some minute changes in his region, in the way that fish behave, in the ways plants grew, and so on. And he knew that something was happening down south. The same, I heard the same thing uh, from an Inuit elder that she had seen many changes happening in her land and she knew that down there in the south things were going bad and this is way before the notion of climate change was invented by the Republicans. Because nowadays, like you know, even the connotation of climate change, it means that it's going to change, that we are shifting from one um, equilibrium to another and we are going to adapt to that new career. And that's, that's, I think, a misnomer, because what we're living right now, present day, is an ecological disaster. You know, we don't even know if the turning point is behind us, or we are just on it, or we're very close to us. We cannot, talk, we cannot know that. <coughs> but I, I, I'm very, um, I, I don't think we can have the luxury of being pessimistic. We have to be optimistic. Because what's at stake is the survival of our species. You know that 250 million years ago, there has been a massive extinction in which 96 to 97 or 98% of life on Earth disappeared. 
So extinction is part of the cycle of Mother Earth. There is a cycle of extinctions and revivals, and there's a new sort of the species that comes into being to dominate the planet. For this past uh, 200,000 years, it's been us. It's, it's been the human species that's been the dominating the species. But nothing can assure us, assure us that we are going to be there forever, you know? And uh, I think we have to be quite prudent in the way we develop our relationships with everything else because that's what is the survival of our species. And, uh, and I, 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 was, I, I, I wanted to convey the notion that uh, indigenous peoples are important not because of their numbers, but because we are beholders of sacred knowledge. Because, you know, when we design our societies, like for instance the Iroquois Confederates, the Inca Confederates, other people's organizations, we didn't depart from abstract notions <coughs> like they did in the West with John Locke, you know, when he devised the three powers of the state. We didn't do that. We paid very close attention to Mother Earth and her cycles. We paid very close attention to Father Sun and the cycles of Father Sun. We paid very close attention to the cosmos and we developed a cosmic vision of how our societies need to be. And that's why, that's how we develop our societies. I have here a chacana, is the Southern Cross for indigenous peoples in the Andean region. And this represents as well the way we devise the Inca governors. And I could explain it, but you know, I don't have the time right now. I do, it, I do this in class. And, uh, but it is just to mention that indigenous peoples, we have always devised our societies being so respectful of our Mother Earth because we all call Pachamama, Mother Earth, our mother because she's our mother. You know, and nobody would harm our, her or his mother. Um, so I really think that we have, as indigenous peoples, and when I say indigenous peoples, you know that I mean everybody, we need to de deconstruct the epistemology of the colonial state. And we have to start to dismantle the colonial mind we all have. We have to dismantle the patriarchal society we, are, we have been living in for about 5,000 years. And we know that in our prophecies, and I think I'm going to uh, finish with uh, uh, just letting let you know about a couple of prophecies we have as indigenous people. One of the prophecies 